the far western corner of New South Wales, one of the hidden gems of Australian learning, the University of New South Wales Fowler's Gap Research Station. Well, Fowler's Gap is an arid zone station. You wouldn't know it looking around today because we've just had 15.8 mils of rain last night in a storm and the stream running behind me normally doesn't run. But it is an arid zone station and we do arid zone research. The arid zone of Australia makes up 90% of the continent and yet has less than 1% of the usable agriculture and 1% of the population. So it's a very large area with a very small population growth. But it's very significant to the ecology and to the character of the country. The station was basically set up to see how the pastoral system, sheep and, and now goats and cattle, uh, interacts with the nat native environment. And it's not a national park, and the aim was never to make it a national park, it was to see how, in my case, kangaroos operated in the real environment, the environment which they find themselves over most of Australia competing if they did with sheep and cattle. Established in 1967, Fowler's Gap Station is a scientific gold mine, spawning an estimated 300 PhDs and 1,000 published papers. All from land that on first glance appears barren. Oh, hell no, it's not empty. It's, uh, it's packed. It's packed with things. You know, all around you, there's, if you understand what's there. They always say wherever there's a niche, you'll have an animal. And nature abhors a vacuum. And I think you come to an area like this, and everywhere you look, you'll find some animal occupying that niche. You know, under your feet, there's a whole ecosystem. You know, small mammals the size of shrews running around under your feet. Uh, geckos and lizards and, and small snakes are all living in the ground, in the ground cracks. As you're walking over this, then you're walking over a whole ecosystem. Australia's only arid zone research station, Fowler's Gap contains enough diverse ecosystems and habitats to provide a vital snapshot of Australia's interior. There are very few arid zone research stations worldwide. There's only a matter of 15 to 20 of them across the planet. So any arid zone research station becomes important. At the moment we have seven different universities from overseas, from North America and from Europe coming here routinely to do research. We have, I think, uh, 14 other Australian universities who are coming here to do research on arid zones. It's a fantastic place to be doing research because you're in this environment where there are lots of researchers from around the world. Lucy's trying to unlock one of this environment's biggest mysteries. How groups of individual animals will gather together like a family to support non-family members. Sounds like she's back. So that call that you can hear, that's the breeding female coming back to the nest. She'll sit on the nest calling and we think that that call might be to bring in the rest of the group to come and feed. This form of behaviour, called cooperative breeding, is extremely rare in most ecosystems, but is found here in abundance, even in the tiniest insects. These are the insects that I'm studying. Uh, they're called thrips, and they've got like a, a kind of a silk that they kind of like weave the leaves together using this kind of sticky silk, and then they'll live on the inside of the, the cavity that's made by those leaves. What's really cool about these ones is that they can either do it alone, well, like one female starting a nest like that, or they can do it in, uh, in teams of several females, up to 12, and nobody knows what makes them cooperate. One of the big questions in cooperative breeding is why would you help raise children that are not your own? And uh, past literature has found that there's multiple reasons why you do that. So by looking at the possum birds, we're just trying to get a piece of that puzzle. Little groups are all banding together to survive. You only get in harsh systems. But behavior aside, life here universally hinges on something far more biologically basic. It's really the adaptability uh, and 
toughness really. Uh, most of the animals out here, if you leave the ecosystem in reasonable shape, you, you couldn't kill them with a stick. As Australia becomes more and more arid, the more important places like this will become because we've already established our research role and we've already undertaken research on plants and animals in the arid zones. Understanding how animals cope in, in the face of environmental uncertainty is, is a really key question at the moment with, with climate change being on the forefront of everyone's minds. I suppose we're all a bit spiritual. I'm an evangelical atheist. But, but, I, but you can be spiritual on top of that. And to get out and walk across the plains, it just makes my hair stand up. It just gives me such a kick. Uh, you, you can't imagine just getting out there by yourself and, or just a, in the truck by yourself and wander around that country look, looking at what's going on. Uh, and it's just forever fascinating. It's just ne it's never the same.